Hello, welcome to Inside 380. I'm your host, Lamar L.A. Smith, and today we'll be covering the NFL, which we'll be discussing Teddy Bridgewater and his growth thus far this season. We'll be talking about the Cardinals and are they really the team to beat in the NFL. Then we will be discussing the NBA and is Chris Bosh back, Thunder in the Bottle, and the Kings versus Clippers that just ended. Then we will be discussing college football and the current playoff rankings. And then we will wrap up the show with college basketball. First of all, we're going to talk about Teddy Bridgewater and his growth. Today, Teddy Bridgewater led his Vikings to a 29-26 win over the Redskins. And Teddy Bridgewater is pretty good as always, but he's been getting better. And you can see that he's growing constantly through this season. And with rookies, they always have a small curve. And either you're good or either you're bad. But this was the good Teddy Bridgewater today. And he was 26 of 42, threw for 268 yards, threw for one TD, and he made all, all the throws that he needed to. Now, some things I would say he needed to work on is here's a couple of good things that he did. First, he has great short and mid, mid range accuracy, which has been a strength. And then he also has great pocket poise, and he's been well in the clutch as of lately. His the things I would say that he needs to improve on is his deep ball. His deep ball has been poor. He's been missing missing receivers. He missed Cordell Patterson on two nice deep balls when he straight beat the cornerback that was checking him. And then he also needs to improve on his just ability to place the ball. He's placing the ball. You know, sometimes the receiver has to go get it, or sometimes it's not on the receiver's hands. So the receiver is making more plays instead of putting the ball where it needs to be. But hopefully all that comes with time. Now we'll talk about the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals are 7-1. and one. They beat the Cowboys 28-17 without their quarterback, Tony Romo. And the Cow Cowboys are now 6-3. and three. And unless they beat the Jags next week, then they'll be 6-4. and four. Next thing you know, looking like a mediocre season is ready in the Cowboys' horizon. They started all 6-1, and one, took two L's, and now you have it where the Cardinals became the first team to start DeMarco Murray. He had 19 touches for 79 yards, and as you can see, he had eight straight games of 100 yards. The Cardinals haven't allowed a, a rushing. The Cardinals haven't allowed a running back to go over 85 yards all of this season, and the Cardinals have a stout defense that in playoff time will direct them to the Super Bowl that they're looking to get to. They're head above everyone else in the NFC West, and they're just doing their thing. Carson Palmer is 12 14 in his last, 12 and 2 in his last 14 starts, and Carson Palmer is 5 and 0 this year. So the Cardinals are looking for real. You know, the wings are flapping, everyone is on the same page. And just look like they're the team to beat right now in the NFC. That was NFL football with you and Inside 380, and we will be back. Hello, we're back with Inside 380, and now we're going to talk about the NBA. Now, it's kind of premature to talk about the NBA, but it's a little little things going on in the NBA right now, and I'm going to talk about Chris Bosh. And is he really back, or is this just a facade? Now, Chris Bosh, in his first two games this year in the NBA season, even though it's still young, he had 26 points and 15 rebounds and four assists in his first game. And that was the first time that he's done that since February 2010, back when he was in TDOT. Now, Chris Bosh, in his second game, had 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists. And he's looking like Chris Bosh. He's not looking like the jump-shooting big man 
that LeBron played with for the last four years. He's looking like a grown man, 2010 Chris Bosh. The Chris Bosh that played in T-Dot. So, Chris Bosh, he seems rejuvenated. Now, he's with his crime, partner in crime, and D-Wade. And D-Wade has eight points, four rebounds, and three assists right now versus Toronto. First quarter ended not that long ago, and they're up 31-26. to Get back, back to you more when that game's in. May have highlights in this episode. We will see. But Chris Bosh, he's shooting from three-point range. From mid-range, mid he's doing exquisite, as he always does. And in the post, he's in the post much more often. And he's hitting the glass, which he didn't do any of his four years in Miami. But Chris Bosh, I have good faith that he will live up to the five years, 118 mil that he has. But now let's talk about the Thunder. The Thunder have several, several, several in injuries. Now they have Anthony Morrow, MCL sprain, Russell Westbrook fractured his right hand early this week, and KD, as you know, has a fractured toe. And the injuries go on and on and on. Last night, in their 102-91 victory over the Denver Nuggets, eight guys played. Count them. Eight guys played. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight guys played. Now, they did pretty well. Actually, they did great. They were up as many as 25 early in the first half, and they kept the lead throughout the game. Perry Jones had 23. Ibaka had 23. And Kendrick Perkins... This may be his career high or something. That's just a, a little snippet for you. He had 17 points. Kendrick Perkins had 17 points. Just let that sit in if you know basketball. He had 17 points. Pretty astonishing. So they'll be pretty well. I say they'll struggle for a long time until their stars come back. But they're going to fight tooth and nail with you every night. They have a good coach in Scott Brooks. Should be interesting. Then you have the Kings and the Clippers. The Clippers, they need to put the clamps on people. The Clippers aren't doing what they're supposed to do in order to get to the conference finals and the NBA finals, which they set to do. They cover the Lakers banners whenever they play them in the Staples Center, in their arena. And Boogie, DeMarcus Cousins, had 34 points, 17 rebounds, and 5 assists. And... He was just eating them up, eating them up. Barbecue chicken, barbecue chicken. DeAndre Jordan and Blake just couldn't handle him, man. What can you expect? He's a wildcat, so there's nothing else left to say about that. That's Inside 380 with you. NBA basketball, I'm done. Hello, Inside 380 is back. And to wrap up the show, we will be talking about college football and college basketball. Now, the college football rankings came out today. And you had Mississippi State number one, you had Florida State number two, number three you have Auburn, and number four you have Alabama. And on the bubble, you have Oregon, which is number five. Now, Florida State got back Louisville pretty luckily, and they won 42-31. to Now, Louisville was up 24-7 early in the game, up 21-0, and they just folded. Florida State made too many big plays, and Jameis Winston, he just turned up on the Cardinal. Now, Oregon, Oregon is on the bubble, but Oregon, if they finish out their regular season and the Pac-12 championship undefeated, they'll have a good chance of, of making it in the playoff just because of the fact Auburn and Alabama will cancel each other out in the Iron Bowl. And then you have Mississippi State, who had a 1% chance of being undefeated in the preseason early. So, with SEC being tough, it's a good chance that only two teams make it in the playoff. Now let's talk about college basketball. With college basketball, UK in the preseason polls ranked number one. Our rival, Louisville, is ranked number eight. And the Cinderella story in Wichita State is ranked number 11. Now, UK, you have Trey Lyles, Tyler Eulis, Carl Towns, Devin Booker, Willie. You have the Twins. The list just goes on and on. Poitras, Market, Keith Lee. So 
There's no reason why we're not ranked number one. Only team to have an NBA combine in college basketball. No surprise. Wichita State, they're going to be pretty good. Nasty. They play at a high tempo pace and great shooters. So there's no reason why they're number 11. Louisville and UK, we're going to beat Louisville this year. So there's nothing else to talk about. That's Inside 380 for you. Nice to have you with us watching the 26th installment and 14th episode. I'm your host, Lamar L.A. Smith. I'm out. The third quarter, and let's watch him do it a couple more times. The reverse one-hander plus the foul. Davis had 26 points on 10 of 20. Another look at the replay that we have. Just a screen out to the left side. Two, and then the third man, Chris Frost. And the ball came down loose, and he, and he came down, and, and it was a legal tackle, yeah. but it was just kind of came down awkwardly. I, I, I think he did. Play big. Mario steps up in the five and throws on the move. Touchdown. Darren Carrington. DeAndre picks it up. Hang on. That's a new the law of the game. That's a what a play. play. They have not run that play in the preseason or during the regular season. And look at the result. Oh, and Chris is looking over at the bench saying, yeah, guys. Kudos to Doc. Whoever designed it, I'm sure he did, but they executed it perfectly. The first.